Hi, welcome to Great Getaways. Well, today we're going to discover the Great Lakes Bay region outdoors. Now, I have a co-host with me here, Mike Hensley. He'll be with me the next couple of shows. Mike is a travel marketing manager for the Great Lakes Bay Regional CVB. And Mike is also an avid outdoorsman, just like we are. And we're going to go out and have some fun. Well, I can't think of a better place to talk about the outdoors than a brewery. You know, you're exactly right, Tom. Midland Brewing Company is something special. Here, they have the perfect blend of new innovative flavors and awesome homages to old traditions. You know, this beer reminds me a lot of the one that we shared together after we worked up a thirst biking throughout the region. One of my favorite trails is the Bay City Riverwalk Trail, which is right downtown Bay City. It is, and it's a beautiful trail. You know, for centuries, humans have always gravitated towards water, and the Bay City River Trail is no exception. You can take a long bike ride or walk or rollerblade uh, and get some really awesome scenic views. And on top of that, you can also go to some of our nature preserves up in Northern Bay County that seem to transcend beyond the boundaries between land and sea. You're sure to get an awesome view no matter where you exercise and where you get your outdoor activity in the Great Lakes Bay region. Hey, well, the one thing about that trail too is the fact that it goes right over the river. <laughs> I, I mean, it's so nice, you're on a boardwalk and you're pedaling down through there, walking down through there, however you want to do it, and it's just beautiful. And there's a great park there, too. There is, and that's one of my favorite trails to walk on my own just for some exercise. This, the, the, the awesome views of nature are just something to really take your breath away other than the exercise. Yeah. <laughs> as, as you're walking on that trail, uh, you can see all sorts of different birds, all sorts of different animals that are kind of making a home out of the, the nature areas alongside the boardwalk. Okay, what do you say we take them there? Let's go see it. With all the trails that are available to us, it was hard to decide where to start. We decided it would be the Bay City area Riverwalk Rail Trail, and together with the gang from the Great Lakes Bay Regional CVB, we would discover these trails by bike, rollerblade, and on foot. The Great Lakes Bay Regional Trail comprises or connects to several area trails and is part of the DNR designated Iron Bell Trail, the longest designated state trail in the nation, which stretches from Ironwood in the western Upper Peninsula to Bell Isle in southeastern and lower Michigan. We started our trip at Bigelow Park, which is located at the north end of Middle Ground Island and is approximately 12 acres. Property for the park was donated in 1929 as a gift from Charles Bigelow, who operated a large sawmill on the riverfront. The park contains an extensive footbridge across the river channel and connects the park to the Veterans Memorial Park and Riverwalk. Walking this trail was a delight for everyone including Herb, Wendy, and Laura, as they walked the complete trip. Well, it was so nice down that trail. I really love it along the river there. It's just a peaceful trail to take. Yeah, you know, it's a great trip and a great trail to be on. The Pier Marquette Trail is a great one, too. You know, and that's often considered the granddaddy of the trails as we move through the region. The Great Lakes Bay Regional Trail is an awesome trail that leads up to the Pier Marquette and connects to it, but the Pier Marquette Trail is probably the most known that we have in the region. It starts at the Tridge right in downtown Midland. Okay, that's such a great spot. I don't know how many people have seen that, but uh, it's something you do want to see when you go down there. There's a nice park there, and you've got that strange looking bridge. It's a three-legged bridge. If you've ever seen one, uh, you've got to get out here and see it for yourself. So let's take you out on the trail and show you that too. We're down here now, as you can see, we've got bikes. Uh, we're right by the Tridge here in Midland. And I don't know whether anybody knows about this or not, but uh, it's quite the bridge. And Mike, maybe I'll let you explain that. Yeah, so the Tridge is a three-armed bridge, hence Tri Bridge, Tridge. Uh, it spans two rivers, uh, the Titwassee and the Chippewa River. And you've got pretty cool options on each side, or all three of uh, the sides of these, this river to do some really cool recreational stuff. We're on the downtown Midland side, uh, and this side happens to be the start of the Pier Marquette Rail Trail. 
Oh, very cool. Yes. Now, how far does that go? So that goes about 30 miles of paved trail between here and Clare, Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, with some really cool scenic overlooks, some great places to stop and take a break. And we're actually going to hit the trail uh, on these bikes here. Okay, you're gonna lead though, right? Yeah. You know the trail. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll follow on. We'll, All right, are cool. you girls ready? All right. All right, let's so, do this. Joining us for a ride was Mike's wife, Kendra, and Amber Bailey, who is the social media manager for the Great Lakes Bay, a regional CVB. The Pierre Marquette Trail is a favorite of folks on foot, skates, and bikes. We started at the Midland Area Farmer's Market. The trail offers a paved four-mile route from Midland to the Chippewa Nature Center, where we'll be going later on in this special, where you'll find a wildlife viewing area, river overlook, and nature-themed programming for kids. The first part of the trail was open to the public in mid-June of 1993 and was formally dedicated on July 17th of 1993. The City of Midland owns the original three-mile portion of the trail since it's located within the city limits. This section was developed by the Midland Area Community Foundation. Mike, I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed with the trail. This well, is a nice trail. It, yeah, you're absolutely right. I love this trail. It's paved the whole way, 30 miles of paved trail. So if you're a beginner biker, if you're an expert, if you've been doing it for your whole life, you can take the pace you want to, see some really cool scenery. We're here in, uh, in Emerson Park right now, just taking a little break. You got the river going this way. We got some birds fly, uh, flying around. It's really just an awesome scene. Hey, we passed another bridge. I always like bridges. I don't know why. <laughs> I like bridges and they're cool. And that one was painted bright red and it was really cool. Yeah. And uh, another thing too, you know, you don't have to go far. You want to bring your kids out and they're little. Yep. You don't have to go far. You can turn around and go right back again. Yep, exactly. Strollers, uh, bikes with training wheels. I just took my training wheels off this morning. Actually, oh, go, so. well, I'm glad you did it for the show. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a beautiful trail, and if you want, you can ride it all the way to Clare, Michigan and back and uh, get a real good workout in. Hey, how far is that? It's about 40 or 30 miles. 30 miles, okay, yep. so it's 60 there and back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Those, you that would be the extreme the experience <laughs> biking uh, category. Uh, I know people that do that stuff, though. Oh. I don't think I could handle it. No, it's not for time. me either. I'm ready for a beer. Are you ready for I a beer? I am ready for a beer. All right. We waited before, so we're not going to wait now. Let's bike. All right. You know, Mike, another great trail is the Saginaw Valley Rail Trail. Now, we actually drove out to the little town of St. Charles. Yeah. And that's where we started the trail at. You know, St. Charles is an awesome little town. If you're into quaint, small town America, that's the perfect place to start. You know, rail trails are such a cool uh, example of reusing products that aren't really in specific use. Taking some of these old railroad tracks and turning them into biking trails, you get to almost transport your t yourself back in to the days of old where train travel was the number one mode of transportation. It, it, it is a great way, you know, and I don't know who came up with that idea to begin with, but what, it, the trail's already there practically. Yeah. And with a little bit of work, we got nice trails out there to ride a long distance. And we had a really nice time. We did came out and we're, we're standing right at the trailhead. There's a trailhead right here in St. Charles. And as you come to it, one of the things you'll find is a map. Yep. So it'll show you the streets that where you start. We're here at Water Street. Um, behind us is the Village of the Living Dead, which that takes place in the fall, of course. But it'll show you where the, rail tra the trailhead is at. It has the major road, which is M52. And it'll show the green where you're going to. We have the wildlife viewing platform. It shows you where that's at. The different roads that you're going to pass. And then it takes you all the way down where it, it ends, way down here in Saginaw. And like I said, it's about 10 miles long, but you can track how long, far you're going. Because when you walk down the path, they'll tell you once you, if you're starting here, once you get to the one mile mark, the two mile mark, and if, okay. you, if you come up one of the side roads, say if you came up starting at Spencer, and it'll have a marker there, and then you can start tracking from that road. I know one thing I like about trails like this, and as I'm looking at this map, I'm now seeing it, is we had crossed a bridge right out here, which is here, but we've got one, two, yep. three, 
four. So we got about five bridges actually that you're going to cross as you go down this trail. I always like bridges because you can stop, you look over the right. water, it's always beautiful. It is beautiful. So, we have a lot of, we're very blessed to have all this water in Saginaw County. We don't have any natural lakes, but we sure have a lot of rivers. We got a lot of rivers. <laughs> we do. The trailhead at Lumberjack Park in St. Charles is over Water Street. Lumberjack Park has a playground, picnic facilities, restroom, and benches to relax near the Bad River. Both of these trail access sites are open to cyclists, joggers, walkers, and rollerbladers. The southern portion of the Saginaw Valley Rail Trail starts at St. Charles. Typical of trails with railway origin, its level surface is friendly to bikers and strollers. This is the most rustic park that we have in all of Saginaw County. Anybody that likes to hike, they're going to love it here. Okay. Tanya, and, I think you should tell us all about it. Well, yep, we are at Ringwood Forest. Uh, there's three and a half miles of hiking trails out here. And as you said, it is. It's one of our most rustically beautiful parks in Saginaw County. There's actually some topography here. Um, you'll get mm -hmm. to work out your legs and hips on our hills. Oh, you got some hills going through here then we, too. We do have some hills going through here. It, 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 is, it is really beautiful. Um, it's a, it's a neat old historic park, uh, kind of an interesting history on it. Um, it was all logged off in 1862. And in 1883, it was planted and it's one of Michigan's earliest pine plantations. And we were in St. Charles and, and one of the things we looked at down there was the river. We have the river going through here too. This is the South Branch? Um, yep, this is the Bad River as well. And um, it go, flows all the way through here. It goes right, under, right on off to our rail trail. Wow. Okay. The trail is primarily used for hiking, walking, trail running, and nature trips, and is best used from April until December. You know, another one that I liked, and I mentioned it in the beginning, is the fat tire biking. You know, biking's not just for summer. You can do it in the winter, too. That's exactly right, and we've got some awesome spots to do that, particularly Midland City Forest. We had a really good time. Fell over a bunch, but hey, it was a great time. It was. Fortunately, the snow was there to make a soft landing, but I managed to fall down a few times. So, it, but a great time out there and great trails too. Whether it's your first time or you are a pro, the fun of fat tire biking is often described as making you feel like you're 12 years old again. Once you pick out the right clothing, including a helmet, you get your tire pressure just right then you're ready to ride. For the most part, riding fat tire bikes in the snow is not about speed, it's about control. Groomed trails are a great way to start out and some of the most fun are the trails at the Midland City Forest Park, north of Midland on Highway 10 on Monroe Street. The forest is open seven days a week, year round, and fat tire biking is just one of the ways to enjoy winter here, along with toboggan runs, sledding, ice skating, snowshoeing, and cross-country skiing. Just like when we were kids, there's always a show-off in the group, or perhaps that show-off was you. Riding a bike through the snow-carpeted forest, even when temperatures are freezing and below, will make a winter recreation devotee out of you. Come with your friends, even your furry ones, to capture the thrill of the ride. What makes the Midland City Forest Trails unique and a challenge to bikers are its hills, bridges, narrow paths, and tree branches brought down by the winter winds. The challenge is good for the soul and makes the day all the more fun. Fat tire bikers say it's natural to slide around a lot when you ride and sometimes it's like driving a car in ruts on a highway. They also say it's best not to stare down at the ground. It will give you a better balance to look ahead to where you're going. Another bit of advice is to stay seated. Of course, you can do all these things and still end up taking a powder. And if you do, it's usually an easy fall resulting in much laughter. And as in every sport, the encouragement to get back up into the seat and carry on. <laughs> I hope I got that on camera. 
probably wasn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> We crossed the trail bridges. We were reminded of how the flood washed this away and how proud the community is of the Parks and Rec Department who recycled city signs and used old bridge decking to rebuild and replace the destroyed bridges. These new bridges will last for years to come. There are so many conditions you can ride in with your fat tire bike and sometimes the snow is powdery other times it's icy. As they say in Michigan, just wait a minute and the weather will change. Come often to Midland City Forest for a fun-filled ride or try any and all of the other trails in the Great Lakes Bay region. Pump up the tires and take nearly 100 miles of safe, accessible groomed trails along our Great Lakes Bay Regional Trail System made up of the Saginaw Valley Rail Trails 11 miles of abandoned railroad corridor from St. Charles to Saginaw, crossing over wildlife-rich ice-covered wetlands of the Shiawassee Nature Preserve. If you're riding the trails on the weekend, be sure to end your winter bike ride with a visit to the one-of-a-kind chalet and have a seat at the log tables or gather around the warming fire. It's the ideal backdrop for recreating all of your fun memories of the day. We're back here at the Midland Brewery again, um, talking about the great outdoors. No better place to do it than in a brewery. And this one's got a little bit of history to it. Yeah, you know what, you're right, Tom. This history of this building is awesome. You know, this brewery opened up in the 30s, right in the middle of the Great Depression. And it had a hard time getting off and it actually had to close. Uh, but in 2010, a group of entrepreneurs opened it back up and were at the beautiful building because they wanted the homage to history of the Midland Brewing Company. And you know, right down the street, after we get done with our beers here, we should go take a walk at Dow Gardens and they have a beautiful structure uh, called the Whiting Forest Canopy Walk. And you know, we were there before, so let's go back and check it out. I think we should do that. It's a great place to be. You're going to enjoy this. It was time to take a trail that was totally different from the rest of the nation's canopy walks. 1,400 feet long and soaring 40 feet above the ground, it is literally a trail in the trees. Within Midland's Dow Gardens is a 54-acre pine forest, including one mile of footpaths and ponds. The CVB made it a family affair with their kids, spouses, and friends. It's a trip made for everyone. Our first trip to this incredible skywalk was during its final construction, and we had a chance to talk to the folks in charge. So Whiting Forest is part of Dow Gardens, which was actually the backyard of Herbert H. Dow, who founded Dow Chemical Company. So here at Whiting Forest, which is a 54-acre parcel of that 110 acres, we are building a canopy walk. We have built a canopy walk, which gets people from ground level up to 40 feet up in trees in an ADA-accessible uh, walkway that's six feet wide. That's what I was looking at here, you know. I, I have been on a treetop walk, so to speak, before, but I was going on little boards and I had to wear harnesses. Right. This? You can actually, anybody can access this. Anybody. We're ADA accessible. We have one and a half miles of ADA pathways as well. And we wanted anyone to be able to experience getting up into the treetop. So our canopy walk goes out into three arms, kind of like a tripod. So at one overlook, you can overlook a pond that was dug by Herbert Dow to irrigate his apple orchards over 100 years ago. You can also end at the spruce arm, we call it, in a grove of spruce trees where you can relax on huge cargo nets. Or you can go out to the orchard arm with a glass overlook and overlook our brand new apple orchard. Now is this something that's going to be open all year long? It will be open year round and Chuck and his crew are going to be responsible for snow removal and making sure people can get up here uh, <laughs> safely all year. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is really a beautiful area out here and Chuck's got a lot to do with that. Chuck here at Horticarthers, tell us about what you do and how you're going to take care of this whole thing. Okay, so I, I, uh, I'm in charge of the grounds and so that means that I'm in charge of the canopy walk and all everything else that's happening. There's a lot of exciting things that happen here as long with the plant material too. 
Um, first of all, I got to tell you, this, this canopy walk, which is, you know, 1,400 uh, feet long, we only cut down six trees in order to build it. So that just shows you. And uh, if you look now into the forest, you can see that we've d very little disturbance to the forest. The uh, workmen here just took unbelievable care on the trees in, in the forest floor. But the other thing that I'm really excited about, in fact, that's how I got involved in this project, is we're putting in an orchard with over 100 varieties of apples. You go to the grocery store, what kind of selection of apples you got? Maybe six, if right. you're lucky. Right. A uh, hundred years ago, the selections were in the hundreds because you had early apples to pick, you had mid-season apples to pick, and then you had the northern spies, which were late-season apples, okay? You had apples for cider, you had apples for applesauce, you had apples for eating called uh, dessert apples, you had apples for apple pies. You know, a hundred years ago, you had all this diversity. Elsewhere, a pond overlooking the landscape encourages reflection. When we looked to the ground and then looked up, it was almost surreal and exciting. Outdoor seating is available throughout the Whiting Forest, as well as indoor seating at the cafe and visitor center. There's also a fenced-in kids' play area with immersive learning experiences, including waterfalls, a tunnel in a hill with a giant pretend bird nest at the top, the children can climb into. Okay, we've got one more piece we want to show you before we end today's show. We went out on the Cass River and did some kayaking, and that was fun. That was fun. You know, the Cass River is great because it's not a deep river, so if you are just getting into kayaking, that's a perfect spot to do it, and it's nice and slow and nice and peaceful. This is what it looks like. Today, we are meeting up with the gang from the Great Lakes CVB to kayak the Cass River. We're here in downtown Frankenmuth today. Uh, you may not be able to tell that from the, what you see in the background here, but we're down here to do a little bit of kayaking on the Cass River. And we've got a whole group of people with us. And Mike, maybe I'll have you uh, tell us who's with us and what we got planned. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some awesome friends uh, of the Convention Visitor Bureau. We're here just behind the Harvey Kern Pavilion at the Cass River Kayak Launch. They've got an awesome multi-use launch that's accessible to anybody who would like to kayak. And we've got Mary, a great friend of the CVB who's actually going to show you how to use it. Um, beautiful area. We, the weather is just absolutely awesome today. We're going to have a great time on this river and uh, maybe see a little of the Bavarian Bell and some other Frank Muth iconic items as we cruise through. We have a special guest kayaker with us, Mary Coons. Mary is going to demonstrate how the handicap ramp makes it possible for everyone to access the water and kayak. Mary wheeled herself down to the ramp and moved from her wheelchair and onto the bench. She scooted down the bench, slid over it to her kayak, and put herself in and pushed off. It is great that these special ramps are located on the rivers in the Great Lakes Bay region to help everyone enjoy these waters. Soon, everyone had their kayaks in the water and they were on their way. Paddling down the river as if on cue, here comes the Bavarian Bell. The Bavarian Bell is an authentic stern drive paddle boat that gives a historical narrated tour of the Frankenmuth area on this fully restored 150 passenger vessel. The Bavarian Bell is an open air canopy on the upper deck and has a fully enclosed lower section with restrooms. It includes a snack bar with soft drinks on board Looks like a fun way to spend a day on the water, relaxing. Whoops, Tom, I think you better get out of the way. I think the bell is bigger than your kayak. The gang took the self-guided tour on the calm waters of the Cass River down past the town of Frankenmuth, where they would float by the Frankenmuth Brewery. I'm sure that's where Tom is going to end his day. I think Tom speaks for everyone when he says they were all enjoying this great trip on a quiet afternoon with friends and family on this easygoing river. The trip was coming to a close and would end under the iconic Frankenmuth covered bridge. This is a great place to experience the joy and tranquility of the great outdoors in the Great Lakes Bay region of Michigan. 
Well, that ends it for this week for part one. Part two is next week. Mike and I will be back here again. If you'd like more information, you go to our website at greatgetaways.tv. And you know, if you saw anything on this show that you'd like to do yourself, make sure you visit gogreat.com to check it out on your own. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.